Hello and welcome to Global Matters. Here on the show, we bring you international issues to shape the world. Issues of global agenda that determine our national and common interests, especially our interests in Nigeria. My name is Tunde Alabi, and thank you for taking the time to join us on today's program. Let us quickly inform you that the Ukraine uh, war and indeed the country has marked 100 days of the Russian invasion of the Eastern European country. However, that's not what we're looking at the show today. When we come on again next, now next episode, we shall be taking a look at 100 days of the war, Russian war in Ukraine. But for today, we are looking at the high rate of ICANIS due to religious intolerance in many parts of Nigeria. This has become a huge concern to many people in and outside the country. This alarming phenomenon is for the by the recent extrajudicial murder of Deborah Samuel, a 200 level Omeknami student at Show Shagari College of Education in Shokuro State, in northern Nigeria. Deborah was accused of blasphemy. On Thursday, the 12th of May 2022, Nigeria and indeed the world held their breath in shock. There so was some young religious fundamentalists parading and students flogged and stoned to death. This 22-year-old Christian student, the most horrendous manner, even as they set a body ablaze. They even recorded and uploaded these barbarism on social media. There have been similar extrajudicial murders in the past. A 75-year-old man, Bridget Agami, a Christian and a trader at Kova Wambai Market in Kano, Nigeria, was beaten to death by Irish youth after accusing her of blasphemy against Islam. Mrs. Eunice Elisha of the Ravine Christian Church of God, Kubwa Abuja, was also killed for preaching in the name of Jesus Christ. Another Christian and carpenter at Kakuri area of Cardona Metropolis, Emmanuel Francis, was mocked and stabbed several times by some Muslim youth for failing to observe the Ramadan fast. In 2006, Florence Shiko, a school teacher in Bauchi, was killed because she told the student to stop reading the Quran in class while she was teaching English language. She was accused of blasphemy and the punishment is murder in cold blood. Certainly, such acts do not speak well by Nigeria. In order to bring this acts of religious intolerance to global attention for action, the chairman of the UK Parliament or Party Parliamentary Group for International Freedom of Religion and Belief, Jim Shannon, was in Nigeria as part of a fact-finding mission and a call to action against religious killings and intolerance in the country. I had to caught up with him and had this exclusive interview on the All Party Parliamentary Group for International Freedom of Religion and Belief. But before that interview, we'll give you this report from Dofan Aga, and when we come back, we should give you this exclusive interview by us AIT with Jim Shannon. Don't get away. The United Kingdom Parliamentary Group on Freedom of Religion and Beliefs are at the banner of this lodge as we were to interact with the state governor Samuel Otum. We are very pleased, we're very proud of our relationship between the United Kingdom and Nigeria and how much we value that. And you know, it's just going to be really doing it and that's why we're here as a delegation as well, so we can promote those good things and bring things together. To interact with us so that to understand the issues that we're on. Um, the government's several people um, uh, to the visit of the Nigerian and black neighbors. Um, the information getting to you uh, most times are not correct. The group is concerned over the steady decline in security, which has led to continued displacements and wonder if there is any strategy in place to return the displaced home. The trust is cruelty, terrorism, terror, killings, displacement. But again and again, we're told that the security forces don't come until the killings have taken place and the burden has been accomplished. Is there a, a long-term strategy? on behalf of the, the federal government beyond a military response to get the IDPs 
back to their farms and get them working and get the economy going again. The visiting parliamentary group appreciated the interaction, which confirmed their suspicion of the declining state of things in the country to make a presentation when they return. Four other reports was presented uh, by um, uh, Dauphin, uh, who is a status correspondent in Benin State. Now, let's quickly tell you that the leader of that delegation, uh, Jin Shannon, he is the, uh, a member of the United Kingdom Parliament, and he is also the chair of the All-Party Parliamentary Group uh, for International Freedom of religion or belief we caught up with him in his hotel and we had this exclusive interview with him where he had his mind on issues around religion killings insecurity and of course we also spoke a bit of the politics in the united kingdom enjoy this interview uh, joining me here on this very special edition of Global Matters, yeah. uh, where we bring global issues to you. Uh, Jim Shannon, Jim is a member of the British Parliament, and uh, Jim is representing um, Stratford uh, in um, Northern, Northern Ireland. Yeah, Democratic Union uh, Party. Yes, Democratic Union yeah. Party. And he is also the chair of the Old Parliamentary Group for International Freedom of Religion and Belief. He is here in Nigeria yeah. and I'm catching up with him live here in the city of Abuja. So yeah. thank you for taking your time. It's a good pleasure. In it's good to meet you. No After pleasure. all the time. I've seen you in, seen you in a Zoom, but now you'll see you in person. Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Let me first have your opinion about Nigeria. You've been in Nigeria since Saudi. What do you think about the country, the people? Well, I, I, I love the country. That's no secret. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a convert. <laughs> Uh, to, to your company. Uh, I love the company, love its people. The people are lovely, they're genuine, they're friendly. Um, I, I suppose the one thing I would do, uh, maybe tell you, is I, I love the sunshine. Yeah. So uh, I think we're going to take some of that sunshine home with us and we'll send you the rain back in return. <laughs> Oh, we've seen the rain the other night there, but yeah, lovely company, lovely people, uh, and, and it's uh, great to make new friends, yeah, mm -hmm. fantastic, yeah. May I ask you why you're in Nigeria? Um, I always had a burden uh, to me for, for uh, um, freedom of religion, belief, uh, in particular, uh, for Nigeria. We've done a report, our APPG, our all-party parliamentary group from freedom of religion or belief, did an inquiry on Nigeria a few years ago. Uh, we made a number of recommendations, which we uh, forwarded to the Nigerian Commission, uh, we forwarded it to the Foreign and Commonwealth uh, Office back in uh, London and we made sure they had some more findings. So those were, were quite graphic. Um, I always hoped, as you know, and I told you, sometimes, uh, sometimes I, I said, I hope you get to Nigeria, here I am, uh, along with a delegation, by the way, a parliamentary delegation, uh, other MPs, uh, people from the House of Lords and, and, and some of other members who are very, very involved in the, on the, in, in the issue of freedom of religious belief. So we wanted to find out uh, because the reports in the evidential base we're getting about attacks upon Christians, attacks upon Muslims, because mm -hmm. you, you know the APPG, we speak up for those with Christian faith, uh, those with other faith, and those with no faith, because uh, I believe, genuinely believe, that my God loves everyone. Uh, therefore, I, I will be the person, along with others, along with many others, who will speak up for those who have been persecuted for their faith. I will defend their right to have their faith. Uh, so for me, this is an opportunity to see firsthand what's happening. Seeing firsthand what is happening. You want to share with us some of those things you have seen firsthand. Some of those things you yeah. have heard since I arrived. Yeah. I'm very conscious, uh, Tunde, that um, we had a chance to visit the ITP camp, the internal displaced people. Uh, people who lived in the northeast of Nigeria and were refugees and internally displaced in their own country ended up here. There's plenty of, I think there's something like 20 plus uh, internal displaced camps across, maybe more than that actually, because there's three, almost 3 million people who have been displaced. Uh, people of, uh, of a Christian faith and those of a Muslim faith. The camp we went to uh, on, on Sunday was a camp where both um, religious views are in the camp. And by the way, they're living okay together in the camp. You know, the, the camps are fairly rudimentary. So for me, um, it was a, 
having the right to, to worship your God in the way you wish to do, number one. But secondly, um, being a person who um, tends to be quite emotional about things and, uh, and, and compassionate as a, as a result of that, I, I think what, I, what we found is we, we've seen people with desperation. People we interviewed didn't really have to tell their story. You just have to look at their eyes. Their eyes told you their story. They told you about the pain, uh, about the past, uh, about the trauma that they had. But there are people internally displaced that can't for eight to nine years, at, at, at least, and maybe for some a bit more. So there's things that we feel that should be done. Uh, we've conveyed those to the High Commissioner just half an hour ago, 45 minutes, and we conveyed that to uh, uh, Human Rights uh, um, uh, Minister who we met earlier on. We conveyed that to other groups as well. It's about education, uh, it's about health, having their health right, it's about job opportunities. And for those who are farmers from the North East who have a, a, a knowledge and, a, and a, an expertise of the soil uh, to, to have somewhere where they can plant and sustain themselves. So those are some of the things we learned out of the camps. Um, ever mindful that the camps are rudimentary. If you're living in a tent or a hut or, or somewhere that's maybe not, not like our houses uh, for, for eight to nine years uh, with nothing to do, um, it's important that we address those issues. So I, I think maybe our, our request would be to the Nigerian government, uh, to our own government, the UK government, uh, in, in partnership with the uh, Nigerian government to, to look at that issue and do some of those things. Let me ask you, as you speak to the camp where we have these IDPs, mm. we have a couple of stories about the security situation mm. in Nigeria. I want to ask you, what message do you have for the Nigerian government? Mm. We're probably at a, a very important time in Nigeria uh, because we have the primaries for the elections for possible change or no change, it depends what happens. Um, the Nigerian people will choose who their leaders will be. Um, I, I, I would probably want to see a Nigeria where we don't have a military issue, or sorry, a, a terrorist issue where Boko Haram, uh, where there are criminal gangs that seem to be able to uh, rob, kill, murder, kidnap at will. Uh, I think law and order, in my opinion, is a, a number one priority. I know for us back home, and Tunde, you will know this, in Northern Ireland, we went through a, a 30 year terrorist struggle. Um, the British government sent in our British army, which I served in, uh, to help to control that terrorist situation, and, and did so. So I believe the duty of, of the Nigerian government is to its people to protect them, number one. Secondly, along with that there, we have to address the issues of poverty, uh, of land uh, um, situations, we have to address the, the issue of, of water rights, we have to address the issue of climate change, where the Sahara is, uh, according to what I hear, three kilometres of the Sahara, of, of the uh, of our land, of the land is lost to the Sahara Desert each year, quite substantial. Um, we've got to learn to live together, uh, we've got to learn to coexist, um, and it takes all sides. But what I did see, and, and, and some of the great things, you know, because you look at the positives all the time, what's it look at the positives? And the positives are uh, that there's people on both sides of the community who want a better future. I think everybody wants a better future, but there are people in the community on both sides who can be the workers to make that happen. Uh, we need to have that in place. We need to have the education. Uh, we need to be teaching our youth uh, um, to, to engage better together from both communities. Um, those are things that we've done back home. In, in a much smaller way, in a much smaller country. Um, and we've got fantastic contacts. We, we, we have uh, um, uh, partnerships with Nigeria and the UK um, culturally, historically, economically, physically, religiously, uh, and all those things make us very much uh, uh, almost cousins or brothers and sisters, you know. So for me, it's, it's all about that. Uh, what, can we build a better future? Yes, we can. Can we do that together? Yes, we can. Can the United Kingdom government help Nigeria? to make that happen? Yes, we can. And that's probably the hope that I would have. Yeah. Let's come back to can you let a kid come and make that happen? How would you be advising the United Kingdom to help the people of Nigeria and the national government who are dealing with poverty in the country, yeah. dealing with insecurity, and dealing with climate change? Yeah. Those three issues you're raising. 
climate change is something that affects every country in the world. So it won't just be how the United Kingdom helps Nigeria do that. It's about all the countries in the world because we've all got to do it together. COP26 uh, uh, conference that took place in Glasgow just last year, which we chaired, uh, and we say we chaired the British government chaired. Um, it, it was that we, we came up with some ideas. So, so that, uh, climate change is an issue we all have to do together. But specifically here in Nigeria, where the advance of the Sahara Desert and taking the, the, the land away and the trees away, etc., over a period of time is something that we've got to address, maybe specifically. Uh, and that's something that the world needs to do with Nigeria. Um, I, I mentioned about the, the five ties, uh, the, the culture, the, the historical, the economic, uh, the, the religious, uh, and also family connections that we have as well. Was Nigeria diaspora is very large in the in, 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 uh, United Kingdom, so there's been lots of uh, engagement, lots of people coming here to the United Kingdom for jobs and vice versa. So how can we do that better? Look, when you have a country where the haves have lots and the have-nots are very little, I think we see a level of poverty we've got to address. So uh, to have a, um, a, a community that's at ease with itself, you've got to address the issue of poverty. Uh, again, there are many in this country who wish to make that happen. Uh, and, and I think we've got to um, recognise the, those who, 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 have that, who have that responsibility and can do that. Um, I, I think um, I'm very conscious of one of the big issues, because out of every, every deputation is education. I think we all see what education can do at a very nursery level, at a, at, a, at a school level, at a university level, uh, at a grammar school level, the whole way through to you get that job uh, and then, then, then that builds your, your, your company from the bottom up uh, and, and also from the top down as well. So I, I think those are things that, that the United Kingdom, we, we, we have, the United Kingdom has 600 um, uh, diplomatic staff here in Lagos and Abuja. Uh, I think that tells you that our government uh, has, a, has a clear commitment to Nigeria. Uh, I think it's the biggest, uh, w one of the biggest delegations uh, that the United Kingdom have anywhere else in the world. So there's a special relationship here. So, so I think we have many staff here working together to make that happen. Probably would like to see maybe uh, more UK aid. Uh, I'll be straight with you. Uh, that's uh, certainly my opinion. I think the United Kingdom government perhaps needs to look at that there. We need to focus and funnel that money down the channels and to, to get to the NGOs, get to the people who are doing good things and just need someone to help them. Um, I, I think there's great opportunities. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm an optimistic. I'm always a half glass full. Always will be because I like to see the, the good things of this world uh, because that encourages people. Um, there, there's things need to change, yes, but there's things that can that can change for the better. And I'm, uh, I suppose I'm the eternal optimist. I, I, I'm confident that the future for Nigeria is a good one. Awesome. You are one of the strongest voices against religious intolerance. Yeah, yes. You speak up for people who they cannot speak up for themselves, yeah. especially in developing countries yeah. who've had their voices on the Jaja and Nigeria mm -hmm. the beginning of the yeah. Beyond yourself, what more can the ADP do for you to ensure both in Africa and around the world mm. people the unnecessary killings yeah. stop yeah. who are able to practice their religion and that would have faith mm. if you are free. Yeah. Uh, 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 and, and as you rightly say, and as we all know, I'm a, um, the APPG is a, a voice for the voiceless. And there's people we speak of for we may never meet. Although I've met some of them on this trip, so I have. So I have to say that's uh, one of the good things. We're very fortunate to that to have a, a, a really good background staff who, who help the APPG. We're the biggest, uh, I think, certainly one of the biggest, if not the biggest, APPG for freedom religious people. 156 members. Uh, that, that's one of the largest APPG. In, in, in Westminster. It also tells you uh, that, that there's many people from all political parties coming together with one focus, one one aim, one target, one thing to do. Um, so, so I think this trip um, um, educates us as uh, members and, and what the real issues are. And when we see the real issues, then we can then transfer them into questions to the Foreign and Commonwealth Development Office, to the Minister directly. Um, uh, we, we, uh, I, I've learned lots of things today, how, uh, over the last few days, sorry, uh, that, that I can use and will use in Parliament. So can we uh, do more? As a Christian and as Chair, very privileged to be the Chair of the APPG for Freedom of Religious Belief, for me, it's all about how we can help people. 
life's always been for me how we can help people. I, I'm very privileged to have this position. So for me, I, I use all my power, all my energy as long as my God gives me that energy uh, to, on behalf of all the people uh, of all faiths across this world. Um, we, 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 we made representations today for, for those with no faith. Uh, and, 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 that, and that's uh, Mubarak, who's a humanist. Um, uh, and and uh, we've been encouraged by what the Nigerian um, um, uh, Human Rights Commission is doing in relation to it. And I think we do hope that, that we will see some movement on that on his behalf and on behalf of his family. We'll see how it works. But there's lots of work we've done behind that. Um, but um, you know, I find that's one thing uh, when it comes to speaking up for those of Christian faith, uh, other faiths. No faith in Westminster. Um, I'm just so pleased that uh, uh, my, my God has chosen me for, for that task. About the last question, so two more questions together. Yeah, yeah. For that question, he says, uh, four people who are fleeing the crisis in Nigeria, mm -hmm. in the other part of Nigeria, mm -hmm. they have successfully made their way to the United Kingdom. They sometimes have difficulties with other kingdoms. I know. You see some of those challenges. Is there the way, having seen some of these problems, that people finally make their way to the United Kingdom and they are faced with very serious, difficult problems, including the asylum, so refugees fleeing the crisis of Nigeria? Any message to my neighborhood office in the UK government? First of all, we met some of those who have fled Northeast Nigeria through the IDP camps and others as well. Um, uh, I think we're aware of their stories. Um, um, firstly, uh, many of the people we met over the last few days here want to return to their homeland, back to the Northeast. Uh, they want to cultivate their land again, they want to educate their children, they want to work there, they want to live there, they want to live there in peace and security, of course. But those who have fled further afield, and many Nigerians have been educated to a very high standard, for instance, doctors, uh, scientists, uh, and, and they've, they've went across the world and located the other places. Um, I, I think. Um, the United Kingdom is always willing to give asylum to those who have fled because of religious persecution, who have fled because their lives are in danger. Um, I, I think uh, the United Kingdom has always been a home, a home for Nigerian people. Um, I, I think the British government uh, have uh, no intention, in my opinion, of, of stopping that. So those who claim asylum, um, I would hope that our, our immigration staff and uh, will be sympathetic to their circumstances and that they will in turn uh, uh, help them to gain the asylum that they want. If they don't want to return to Nigeria, that's their choice. But we should be trying to help them. Thank you so much. The last question is something to ask. There are Nigerians that are following up on what is happening in Westminster, the party gate, the private business party gate. Mm. This is my last question. Where will this end? Um, For the private minister. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, yeah. threw the topic of one for back home. No secret that I was uh, particularly unhappy with that, as many others were. Um, uh, it's no secret that I lost my mother-in-law to COVID uh, during or whenever we followed the rules. No, no, no secret. Uh, my mother-in-law died in five days uh, due to COVID. Um, uh, we didn't get her home in a close coffin after 12 days. We had a funeral where, where 25 people only were allowed to attend. We followed the rules. So did 156,000 other people in the United Kingdom, probably 160,000 now. Almost 4,000 were people in Northern Ireland, in my home, my region. Um, so um, the issue of, 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 of the Prime Minister's um, indiscretions uh, are clear. Um, uh, and he has been fined 
um, and some of those cases have not been proven against him. Um, it's not up to me what happens to the Prime Minister because I'm not a Conservative member of Parliament. The Conservative Party members have the, are the people who make that decision. Nobody else can make that. Keir, Keir Starmer, the Labour shadow, um, leader, cannot make that decision. But the Conservative MPs will make it. So I leave that decision with them. I would say this as well because I think it's really important to say this, Anton. Uh, um, the Prime Minister has been incredibly strong, has been a world leader when it comes to Ukraine and the support he's given to Ukraine uh, in military weapons, in, in advice, in aid, uh, and his support has led many other countries who were perhaps hesitant about uh, giving the support. So I think he's done well, um, and, and we have to recognise that. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the Conservative Party has to make that decision. It won't be Jim Shannon, because Jim Shannon's no vote on it, you know? <laughs> uh, but the Conservatives have. All right, Jim Shannon. Jim Shannon is a member of the United Kingdom Parliament, and he is the chair of the All Party Parliamentary Group Special Committee uh, Group set up by the uh, United Kingdom Parliament uh, on International Freedom of Religion or Belief, visited Nigeria, expressing his view. This is how far we can go. We'll continue with this interview probably sometime soon. I'll bring you more details about this visit to Nigeria. My name is Twin Labi. We should stop this interview intolerance and this killing we are all brothers notwithstanding our different religious faith keep safe my name is Joyce. sincere appreciation to the colleagues who made this possible enjoy your weekend